everybody, it's Dr. Eric Balkat, we're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday, and today we're talking about the free T3 to free T4 ratio. I've kind of talked about this, um, and I just kind of didn't consider that a lot of people aren't aware of what it is. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit more in depth because I've got a lot of questions about what the free T3 free, free T4 ratio is and what range do I use. So let me kind of go through a couple things with this ratio. So what this indicates is the conversion of T4 to T3 at the tissue level uh, and potentially the thyroid gland compensation. Keep in mind that most of the T3 in the body is not made by the thyroid gland. On average, and this is arguable, the thyroid gland makes about five micrograms per day, maybe up to 10, depending on the person, and that the rest of the, of the 30 micrograms is made by the kidneys, the liver, and all the other tissues that have deiodinase 2 uh, that converts T4 to T3. So we think about the, the liver doing most of it. That's what kind of what we were told, that most that the liver makes most of the T4 into, most of the T3 by converting T4 to T3 by deiodinase 1, and their kidneys do a little bit as well. And the science seems to dispute that. And, it, and the dispute is, is that there's, maybe five or 10 micrograms made by the liver and the kidneys, but the rest of it is made by all the peripheral tissues that have the ability to convert T4 to T3, primarily by deiodinase 2. So those cells bring T4 in, they convert T4 to T3, T3 binds to receptors, or maybe it doesn't, but binds to receptors, gets used for a period of time, and then it goes back out into the bloodstream and becomes part of the circulating pool of T3 that can then go to another tissue and be used until eventually it's metabolized out of the body in the next 24 hours or so, okay? So why would we use this range? Well, what this range can help us understand in, is how well the tissues are converting the T4 that's in the bloodstream into T3. So I talk about the cell stress response. Cells get to determine what happens to T4. So the thyroid gland can make T4 uh, and most of the tissues then bring some of that T4 in, convert it to T3, and then that T3 comes back out of the pool. But just because there's plenty of T4 in the, in the bloodstream and T, plenty of T4 and potentially T3 getting to the hypothalamus doesn't mean that the rest of the tissues are functioning with that in a high thyroid hormone state or a high metabolic state. Different cells and tissues have the ability to self-regulate. So this kind of gives us an overall view of how well the overall body is converting T4 to T3. And that's really what we want to know because T4 can quickly normalize the TSH and we think, oh, we're good because TSH is within this normal range or we've driven it low. But when we, what causes hypothyroid signs and symptoms is low T3 inside the cell. So if a doctor never looks at um, your T3 or free T3 level, how do we know if that T4 is actually getting converted to T3 optimally? And unless you look at tissue indicators of thyroid status, you may not know that that's occurring. Obviously you might have signs and symptoms, but somebody might say, hey, those signs and symptoms aren't related to thyroid because I've normalized your TSH. But they could be, if we look at your lipids, if we look at markers of glucose resistance, if we look at markers of renal function, if we look at a bunch of other markers in the body, we can see that there's a low metabolic state in, those, in some of these tissues, therefore there's lower T3 in those tissues. So what we call tissue, or what I call, and Dr. Kelly calls tissue hypothyroidism. So I really like this free T3, free T4 ratio. I like it better than like looking at reverse T3 and the T3 to reverse T3 and free T3 to reverse T3 ratios. I really like this ratio better along with confirming that tissue hypothyroidism by looking at the rest of a blood panel. But let's talk about this ratio a bit. So it gives us an idea of what's happening at the tissue level. Keep in mind that if you're taking T3 medication, it's going to skew the value because if you're taking T3, you're not measuring necessarily only what the thyroid gland is compensated with or what the peripheral tissues are making. You're measuring what you're giving. So that ratio is flawed. So you have to keep that in mind. If somebody has glandular hypothyroidism, the gland is shot, there's no cell danger response, the cells are hypothyroid, 
then what you're going to see is a high ratio because the cells are starving for thyroid hormone. They're gonna bring as much T4 in and convert it to T3, and so you'll see a high ratio, okay? If there's glandular hypothyroidism, the gland can't make enough, and there's a cell danger response going on, you, you may see that that ratio may be normal or lower because this, even though there's not a lot of T4 in the bloodstream, the some of the cells are still resisting that conversion of T4 to T3. If you're taking T4 medication, just T4 at this point, and you, there is no cell stress, cell danger response going on, the ratio is going to be normal or it'll be elevated if there's still insufficient replacement. Even if your TSH is in a more normal range, if that ratio is still elevated, it's indicating that the cells are starving and doing a high conversion. So you might be on insufficient T4. If you're taking T4 and there is a cell danger response, even though your TSH may have been normalized and T4 is good, the ratio is going to be low, okay? So there's plenty of TS, there's plenty of T4 to saturate the hypothalamus and the pituitary, but there's not enough T3 in the peripheral tissues. TSH could be normal, but that lower free T3 to free T4 ratio will tell us something is causing the cells to not want to convert that T4 to T3. If you're taking armor, T4, T3, T3 only, the calculation is less valid because free T3 is not coming from the tissues. Now you can still use that ratio if you're comparing a blood value that has the same amount of T3 and T4. So if you had your blood work done in September and you do the ratio, you understand if you're on some level of T3, whatever, if it's armor, T4, and T3, or just T3, you, get, you can look at that measurement it doesn't truly tell you what the tissue conversion is, but if you do another blood work in say January with the same T4 and same T3 dose, then you can compare those two values. So if the ratio in November was low, there wasn't good conversion, and let's say you changed your diet and you worked on your sleep and your respiration, and then you have, this, you have the blood work done again in January and the ratio is better, even though it's there's you're still taking T3, we can make an assumption that there's better conversion there, likely because you're you made some positive changes. So there's less cell stress response, there's more conversion. Okay. Now, there's there's some caveats to taking T3 that we also have to talk about because it reduces T4 level, but let's just keep it simple for that for that point of view. So how do you calculate this value? Well, typically you gotta, you've got to get T4 and free T4 and free T3 into the same units. Typically on a lab report, um, your free T3 is gonna be in picomoles per milliliter, your free T4 is gonna be in nanograms per deciliter. And so I like to convert both of those into picomoles per liter and then divide free T3 by free T4. If you use that calculation, we look at 0 0.31 and 0 0.34 as the optimal range, and this is based on the scientific literature. Uh, you can go to a website called Units Lab, and they'll help you do that calculation from whatever units it's in uh, to whatever units you want to use. So that's what I use to do it. There is a, there's a really good website, it's called Optimal DX, and they have lots of calculators on their, on their uh, platform uh, to help you convert from international units to standard units. I think it's a great site. They've got a lot of help for people and clinicians to do their calculations. They use a range of 2.4 to 2.7 as the range. The problem with that is um, if you're looking at their calculator and then you're listening to somebody like me, you say, well, why, can, why is the range 2.4 to 2.7? And I'm saying it's 0.31 to 0 0.34, it's because they don't change the units. They're just keeping the units at picograms per milliliter and you're plugging in F, uh, free T4 and nanograms per deciliter 
and they're doing the calculation. So that's why it's different. But this is what I see in the clinical literature. That's why I use it. So this can be a really good tool for you to know how you're doing converting T4 to T3 along with looking at the rest of your labs. If you have any questions about this, put them below wherever you watch the video and stay tuned for more Thyroid Thursday videos.